interesting thought. I feel I should take exception to the idea that men can't be trusted. <laughs> well, but then again, she's not well here. She's not here to defend herself, whereas Anne is. So we <laughs> might as well fall out with Anne, as is my want. Good right. morning to you. Good morning. <laughs> so it's time for dilemmas, and we have some feedback for Anne. If you remember Matthew from Cambridge, the Baptist youth leader, uh, he was worried that other youth leaders were trying to scare young people uh, into signing up to Christianity. Well, Carol from Hampshire felt very angry with your response. It was made out, she feels, that it was Matthew who needed more spiritual development rather than suggesting that the church should be challenged. Right. Fair point? Uh, I certainly, uh, I'm sorry she didn't get the impression that I, I was also saying that it's not a sensible way to, you know, you can't frighten people into the kingdom of God, uh, which I did also say, but perhaps I didn't emphasize it enough. Mm -hmm. Well, on the same subject, mm -hmm. Anne, Charles from London has written to say, to my knowledge, there has never been any research to prove that Christians do harm to children by teaching them that they will be tortured in hell forever if they're bad. Mm -hmm. so. I think this throws up something which, which actually was touched on in the item we've just seen, that Christianity, like Judaism, is not something you can make up as you go along. And, um, you know, that there are essential elements of Christianity that we may not like. For example, the idea that some of us may not be in heaven when we get there. But um, Christianity has always been a religion that is offensive to people when it's preached in its entirety and Jesus always said that he always said you know you're going to be a minority and it's in a sense the last thousand years have been atypical of Christianity and there are aspects though that people don't like and hell is one of them okay well we have received many letters about the second coming obviously a huge subject uh, within Christianity and here's Jan from Manchester I have problems believing Christ will return I'm a Methodist but also a realist the second coming seems to be more prominent in worship nowadays. So do we have to believe Christ will come again to be a Christian? And if so, why? <laughs> I, don't, I wouldn't put it that way around, that you, you, know, you define a Christian by somebody who believes in the second coming. You're a Christian if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as the Lord of creation and put your trust in him. But again, this comes back to the point that we were just talking about. If you put your trust in Jesus, you must trust him in everything he said and this was something he very definitely said he predicted two events one was the destruction of the temple of jerusalem which he said would be within that generation and it was in 70 ad and the other event was him coming back to judge the world and that is repeated throughout the new testament it's repeated in thessalonians in one peter referred to sort of in picture language in revelation but jesus was very clear on this that history would end with a bang in the way that we now know it probably began. It, it, almost it's easier to believe in it now than it was then, now that we know all these extraordinary things about the physical universe, you know, how the world started. And but, you know, it's 2,000 years ago now. I mean, are people not beginning to give up hope? Ah, but again, you see, that was in, in the letter to the Thessalonians. People will scoff. People will say it hasn't happened. You know, it's not going to happen. It, that was exactly foreseen then, and, and, and Jesus himself foresaw it. He said people will come and claim to be the Christ who aren't. But when I come, it will be absolutely unmistakable. It won't be like the first coming, where, you know, it was a quiet sort of a baby mm. born in a quiet sort of almost normal pla place and time, this will be the world coming to an end. Now, the first time he came, it was good news to be around because mm -hmm. he was saying, you're going wrong and here's how to put everything right. Right. But you don't want to be around <laughs> for the second coming. Well, it, 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 it's ambiguous. It depends. Well, do you? Would you well, like to be here? <laughs> yes and no. Gospel means an annunciation of a victory. Now, it depends which side you're on, whether or not that's good news, doesn't it? If you've if you've put your trust in the king, when the king comes, in a sense, it's very good news, but it's very bad news for all the people who are enemies of the king. And there's very much a sense of that. It will be a very frightening time, but if we've put our trust in the Lord Jesus, he will rescue us. So, Jan, okay. uh, why? Because he said he was coming back, and do you have to believe? Yes, you do. <laughs> well, I hope that helps you, Jan. And, and thank you very much. And you're after more dilemmas, of course. We are indeed. If you have a spiritual dilemma, we'd love...